This is the game that got me hooked on VR. It's macabre setting, it's eerie sounds and terrifying enemies. This is Into the Radius on the Pico 4. Originally released back in 2020 on Steam, Into the Radius is not exactly a new kid on the block when it comes to VR gaming. But with the exciting news that a sequel is currently in development, I wanted to go back and share with you the game that basically sold me to the world of virtual reality. For me, Into the Radius has it all. Adventure, exploration, survival, strategy, horror and action. <laughs> It really is an incredibly immersive experience. And yes, it can also get pretty scary. For a quick bit of backstory, you are explorer number 61, who ventures into a town that was hit by what locals have described as an earthquake that filled the sky with dust. Once the dust settled, a huge dark red orb appeared in the sky and the town is now a mess frozen in time. Fast forward to 2002 and the area is now protected by the UNPSC, who are also your employer. They offer you missions to venture out into the now mangled and twisted landscape, where you'll also find clues, uncover conspiracies to what has actually happened here, and battle some odd and creepy anomalies. But let me warn you, venturing outside your safe complex is a challenging experience. Luckily, it is also a very rewarding one as well, especially if you can survive. Looking at the gameplay, well Into the Radius is completely open world, and through this mechanic it offers you an incredible amount of depth. From selecting which mission to embark on, to packing your rucksack, choosing your weapons and even your route of exploration. Everything you do also brings an element of risk, adding to the anxiety of your gameplay environment. Once you begin a mission or just go out to explore, yes you can do either or both, you will venture into bleak and warped surroundings with sensational macabre sounds just to keep you on edge. Although this is not exactly survival horror, it does indeed have a lot of those elements. It is a drab and dreary atmosphere combined with battling the unknown, as you discover what can only be described as captured incidents. There is no linear narrative however, and Into the Radius sets itself up for more exploration and stealth than just surviving horror. Of course you will battle against bizarre entities, enter intense gunfights and be planning your next move through the use of what you can carry with you. Missions can range from collecting artifacts, capturing evidence of these enemy creatures and even planting and detonating bombs. Before you set out on a mission though, you will need to carefully decide which guns to take with you, but also you'll need to think about how much ammo you think will cover you in case you run into enemies. Plus not forgetting food and medical supplies if you have them. But don't expect physics to arrange your backpack for you, because here there aren't any. Well at least not for your rucksack anyways. At first I thought it was just a way for creators to concentrate on other parts of development. But no, this is so you yourself have to organise your pack. And if you don't, you'll be surprised just how quickly you end up scrambling through your belongings as you are suddenly ambushed. It is also important to know that the more you carry rapidly decreases your stamina, forcing you to either rest or gulp down some of your rations, which is no easy task when you are being attacked. The map is absolutely huge, and this opens up even more so as you progress through the game. There are factories, houses, woods, the list goes on, all available for you to either explore, loot, or just use to your advantage as a hiding spot. Of course, this also adds to the many hours of additional replay value as well. Just don't expect anything too special from the post-apocalyptic wasteland though, as like I said, it is a wasteland, so the graphics do look slightly dated, but thanks to the developers behind Into the Radius, they have carried on tirelessly releasing updates to polish, improve and maximise the strengths of the Pico 4's abilities. Plus an added bonus with the Pico 4 is that you can still experience it all in glorious 4K resolution. Your interaction with objects is also pretty smooth whilst you scrounge around, but don't expect anything like Half-Life Alex. Remember this is standalone VR, 
but still using the Pico 4's controllers, along with additional hand tracking, is excellent for keeping your immersion fully intact. With so much to shift through and the pre-mentioned huge area to walk around, this can almost distract you from your missions entirely, as the more items you find, the more you can sell, which then leads to weapon purchases, armour, upgrades, plus a whole lot more that can make your journey through the radius just that little bit easier. I must admit though, the occasional opening of a drawer or two can get a bit sticky, and I have found that some of the missions do have that repetitive feeling to them. But overall, the gameplay is still intensely satisfying. The AI of the creatures is strangely apt as well. They are not super intelligent, but will seek you out if you draw attention to yourself, which is pretty frightening. However, don't be surprised how quickly you can evade some of them just by crouching behind a corner. Some creatures do give themselves away with their sinister sounds, and some may even fire at you from afar. But in terms of their menacing behaviour and oddly generated characteristics, it all adds to the ghostly climate. With the game's heavy emphasis on planning and preparation, as well as maintaining your armoury, how well you do or do not do this will certainly affect the tempo of the gameplay. But one thing I haven't spoken to you about yet is the always ticking clock of the tide. This is a phenomenon that happens every couple of days, and to put it bluntly, well, it basically resets everything and respawns enemies. And if you do get caught in it, well, then expect to be transported to a completely random place on the map. Basically, this is something you want to avoid whenever you can. However, it does also keep you on your toes in regards to your time management. So what is it about Into the Radius that makes me recommend it so much? Well, if you have read Roadside Picnic or seen the film adaptation Stalker, then this is what the game is loosely based on. And through this homage, it has a taste of everything that the world of VR can offer you. It's not an action game, nor does it fall under horror, yet it still surprises you with elements from both. You can either be a stealth looter or an armed explorer, silently creeping through what remains of this apocalypse, when suddenly you are dodging bullets and battling tormented creatures. Even the level of complexity that it entails before you even begin your missions is a wonderful yet tantalising experience, adding to that full immersion that VR gaming provides. Weapons have to be manually reloaded, kept in a clean and working order, you have to eat and sleep, you can buy and sell, and if you fancy plucking some strings, then yes, you can even play the guitar. Whether you're a new or experienced gamer, Everything is here, all wrapped up in a superbly large and menacing world. If you are easily frightened, then possibly this could be a game to avoid. But personally, I don't feel it is full of jump scares. It is more the build-up of tension each mission provides, the ticking clock of the so-called tide, not to mention the day and night cycles, which do overcome you very quickly, leaving you in the dark with all the terrors that go bump in the night. It's just so cleverly crafted, superbly initiated and wonderfully addictive. So to summarise, if you haven't added Into the Radius to your Pico 4 library yet, then I strongly suggest that you do. It's a deep and engaging world that will fill you with curiosity, terror, thrill and excitement. There are occasional blips that remind you it is only a game, but overlook these and you will be glad of your investment into the developer's creation. Its effective open world simplicity will have you immersed from the beginning, and its scavenger mechanics with hostile combat will have you coming back for more. And although Inter Radius may not exactly be classed as one of the finest VR games on the market, in my opinion, it is most definitely up there as one of the best. And there we go, that is my review for the VR game Into the Radius, which is currently available on the Pico 4 headset. But please do let me know your thoughts. Have you played this game or is it something you are thinking of buying? Do let me know in the comment section below. Not forgetting, if you enjoyed this review and you like tech, gadgets, as well as VR, then please show your support to the channel by liking this video and of course subscribing. But until next time, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all at some point very soon. Thank you.